Greetings, Earthlings. Jeff Stockton coming to you today with another music lesson. This one we're going to talk about how to harmonize a melody. Um, there are lots of ways, and this lesson is sadly going to only be able to scratch the surface of something that's a rather huge and involved craft with a lot of facets. But we're going to do our best to make that happen. So. We're going to look at some various examples today. I'll play a few on the guitar. Let's start with an incredibly simple melody. Simple melodies are obviously going to be the easiest things to harmonize. So let's take Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in G, which is probably at the beginning of like almost every method book or whatever. And what we're going to do is move it up an octave and just for our purposes right now, we'll just put it all on one string. So now it's really easy on the guitar anyway, if you're a guitarist, uh, putting your melody on the top string or two is really useful to being able to harmonize the melody because having the melody notes at the top is, is key to making the melody stand out. So with that said, uh, here, here would be a really simple um, harmonization. Now, I'm basically thinking G for a measure, C for a half a bar, G for a half a bar, the same thing again, and then a D for a half a bar, and a G for a, a half a bar. Or maybe a D7 to G. So that's, that's basically the harmony I'm going to be outlining here. For those of you guitar players who are kind of new to things, um, if you don't know how to find the notes of these chords all over your fretboard, that's a big skill that you have to step back and, and spend some time on before you're going to be ready to do these kinds of things. Um, you have to be able to really readily grab any note on the guitar. I've got a video about that and uh, I'll, I will link it below and uh, yeah for those of you who need it please check it out I think you'll enjoy it. If, 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 if we know a lot in regards to chord substitution and general reharmonization concepts we can do a lot more in terms of harmonizing this melody. Now um, I'll have the, the chord information above here, and, and here's, here's what I'm going to play next. Um, again, just the twinkle twinkle little star melody. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is an incredibly easy melody to harmonize. One reason for this being, and this is really the reason for it, is that every note in the Twinkle Twinkle Star melody is one type of melody note. It's a chord tone. Um, there are a few different types of melody notes. There are chord tones, diatonic passing tones, extended tones or non-chord non-passing tones and you have chromatic approach tones and you have chromatic passing tones also known as neighboring tones so these are your different kinds of melody notes and uh, we're going to kind of talk about each one of them a little bit so we have um for starters, chord tones. We, we looked at how easy those are to harmonize. We just harmonize them to the remaining notes of a chord. 
So if your melody note is B and your chord is a G chord, then you're just going to fill it in with a G and a D. Um, of course, you know you want to have a decent understanding of harmony and of fretboard mapping. Uh, both of which I have videos that are uh, linked below that you can check out. The next type of melody notes to talk about is diatonic passing tones. Um, a good example of this would be Santa Claus is coming to town. So not every one of those notes is a chord tone. These are chord tones for our C chord. It's the third and the fifth of our C chord. Da, 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 da. That middle note is an F, which is not a member of the C chord, but it happens very quickly, and it's happening kind of in between the beats. A passing tone can even take up an entire beat if it's on a weak beat, if it's on a two or a four. But really, the, if it's on a strong beat, then it's, it's something else. Um, so, in order to harmonize these passing tones, these uh, diatonic passing tones, we just have to harmonize to a diminished chord for that note. So, a diminished seventh chord off of F, um, it's going to have, I can grab a B here and I can grab an A flat here. And so this first note is harmonized to a C chord. I've got E at the top, so there's the C and the G below. And then I'm arriving at another C inversion. Well, this is the C root position, root third fifth, with the fifth at the top. But I've got this. Or I could go like that, which kind of voice leads a little better. And that's just, of course, you know, anything that's a minor third apart, you know, on, on these notes, on these uh, diatonic passing tones will work great. Um, now, if you don't want to get quite as jazzy or classic sounding uh, passing tones like that, then you might just want to pick out some opposing chord, some chord in the key that has none of its notes in common with the chord that you're on and you can just kind of harmonize every uh, pa passing tone every diatonic passing tone with that chord so right there I used a D minor chord because it doesn't have any C chord notes in it that has more of a gospel kind of sound like classic gospel sound compared to which has a little more of a jazzy sound. So that's kind of how these, these passing tones work when they're diatonic. Um, we just harmonize them to diminished chords, um, borrowed diminished chords, you know, because obviously our original chord is still going on underneath all of this. So, and, and don't be scared that you have like two chords happening simultaneously for a, a given moment there. It's, it's, uh, it's all right as long as it's resolving. Now, the next type of note that we want to talk about is the extended tone or the non-chord, non-passing tone. So these are notes that obviously they aren't in the chord and they're not serving as passing tones. That means that they're going to be on a strong beat, they're going to be on a one or a three, they're going to possibly last for longer than a beat or a beat and a half or, you know, even longer. Um, okay, a few examples of this might be... Let's see, Careless Whisper. So at the beginning they were on a C minor chord and it's going D as its very first note in this very, you know, emphasized D. And then the, the, the C, the root note of the thing is being treated like an afterthought. And then we get the fifth and the flat third at the bottom. So uh, these are basically just going to harmonize these notes to the same chord. You know, whatever chord happens to be going on. And in, in that case, it's a C minor chord. So I'm just replacing my C with a D note because it's the closest thing to the D. So to eliminate any unwanted clustering, I, I eliminate the C note 
and then I st still have that the fifth and the flat third beneath. So that's all chord tone harmonization there, even though that first note's not a chord tone. It's being treated like a chord tone in the melody. So that's kind of how we deal with those sorts of notes. We just replace whatever the nearest chord tone is with that note and harmonize it to that same existing chord, whatever the chord happens to be. Approach tones are basically uh, notes that are leading a half a step up into either a chord tone or possibly one of those non-chord, non-passing or extended tones. So for instance, so I'm going from the fifth to the fourth, the sharp two leading to the third. Now for those, normally this third I'd harmonize as a C chord with just a, a root and a fifth beneath it. So I can just, this note here, I can just move that entire chord a half step up. Now don't fear that you're using parallel fifths here. The only time that you need to worry about avoiding parallel perfect intervals of any kind is when you're trying to write specifically in a counterpoint style where you know each voice is moving as an independent melody. Um, block harmonization, that's not typically what's going on. The, the emphasis is, is more on creating a cohesive unit of harmony, you know, uh, a harmony that directly reflects the melody. So that gives you some ideas of, of how you can harmonize these different types of melody notes. The, the key thing to keep in mind here is that we need to be able to identify what types of notes that we're harmonizing, because otherwise we don't know how to treat them. I, you know, I would start with really simple melodies, melodies that you know are as easy as can be in terms of playing them and in terms of remembering them, understanding them, and, and take them and start applying these ideas to them. And, and as you gain some confidence, uh, start picking some melodies that you know have a little more sophistication to them. You know? The more of these extended or non-chord, non-passing tones that you run into, the more of these, you know, even the passing tones, the approach tones, neighboring tones, all that stuff, it really uh, you know, creates a lot of richness in a melody, but then it also creates a, a situation where you have a lot more to account for in terms of how to harmonize it as a block harmonization, you know, this cohesive unit of harmony that, that reflects the melody exactly. You know. If you're playing a polyphonic instrument of any kind, chord melody is an excellent skill to get under your fingers. And, uh, you know, even for those of you who, who don't play such an instrument, you know, even just being able to write parts on the computer or whatever that, that are, you know, well harmonized like this is, is an awesome skill to have. So, yeah, uh, if you guys have questions about any of this, leave them in the comment section below. Leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.